another video. Now this is a follow up to my previous video and tutorial which was everything you need to know about Sima 4D within Minecraft and you know things to do with that but I didn't show you how to import your Minecraft worlds into my uh, into uh, Sima 4D so that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. Uh, all you're gonna be needing is a computer and uh, software, a free software called Mineways that we're gonna download. So what you want to do first is head to the link in the description or type this in your browser of choice, Mineways. And uh, the first link you're gonna get, uh, click it and then and then you have it, this website. Now this tutorial is the same for PC and for Mac, uh, but uh, there is a few minor minor differences so if you have any questions just ask them and I will reply to them because I have used Mineways on a Mac and PC so I know how to use them. Now Mineways is a 3D uh, operating program that lets you turn in your Minecraft worlds into something 3D that then you can 3D print or uh, export for rendering. Uh, in this video I'm going to teach you how to export it for rendering and then use it in Cinema 4D. Uh, now how you get it is basically going to downloads and then click the platform of your choice. I'm, I would click for PC, but I already have it. So after you click it, you get a zip folder. After you extract that from the zip folder, oops, sorry, uh, you get this folder right here. Uh, you can double click this, and then you have a whole bunch of these files. Now, most of these, don't, uh, you're not going to get this, by the way. So uh, I can. Uh, this, everything else but this I'm pretty sure uh, so you want to click Mineways this or if you have a 32-bit computer Mineways this um, I'm gonna go with this so you double click you click run if it doesn't allow you um, and then this little window opens up uh, now this little window is actually everything you'll need in my inside of Mineways uh, so what you want to do is uh, to find your Minecraft world you go file open world and then you have all these things because it access it will access your Minecraft saves folder which all your worlds are in and I'm just gonna go click this one test or a test world and you have uh, the your whole world that you've generated you know so these gray parts I haven't generated them yet so it doesn't know what it looks like uh, but you know I, let's just say I want to export this part with the ocean and a nice forest uh, and keep in mind that the bigger it is, uh, the longer it will take to export. It do doesn't take very long at all, it takes like 4 seconds. But it will take longer to uh, uh, render in Cinema 4D. So if, keep it as small as you can, but not too small, if you know what I mean. Uh, so what you want to do is hold your right click on your mouse and drag. And pick the area that you want to use. I'm going to use uh, this space right here. And... Um, just click yes on here and then you have these two bars there not very important but they still do play a part so max height is the max height that your um your render will export to so if there's a bl if uh so you basically want to put this down uh, this doesn't really matter all that much but it helps so uh, let's say that you have a really bad computer and you want to save all the rendering time you can. You go down this max height, you pull it down to the lowest part possible. So you'll see when it's the lowest when you when uh, things in your square start turning purple. So wait for it. Okay, so you see in the square it started turning purple. So you want to probably okay 85 and then. Uh, lower depth is the as low as it can go now if you're if you're in your animation You're not going to use any caves You probably just want to go above this up to about 40 and you're not going to see the difference if you're going to use caves You want to probably put it to zero so you get the full effect. I'm going to put it to 41 why not and then that is pretty much it about what it's uh, is concerning um the choosing of the world and then you go uh, to file and you have to set a terrain file otherwise it won't export proper properly so you click set terrain file and then it takes you to your mindless folder which just you just downloaded and you wanna click the terrain base png this one not the other ones terrain base because this one's the base one uh, you can also use other texture packs but I don't know how I, I, I but I know there's a way so you can look that up um, 
and then uh, if you want to 3d print you click this but I have no idea how you do this so don't ask me uh, and if you want to use it in cinema 4d you uh, click export for rendering and then you need to save it I'll save it to my desktop just for the purposes of this video but you can save it wherever the frick you want and um, I'll name it uh, I'll name it test world and uh, you need to, this is a very important part, you need to save it as Wavefront OBJ Absolute. So this is the file. Nothing else, it's just this one, o dot .obj needs to be the ending. And you click save, and then this comes up, comes up and this doesn't matter, just click OK. And uh, it should start appearing, yes, OK, so uh, you can now close down. Uh, mine ways because you won't be needing them in this tutorial anymore. So as you can see this this oh crap this one oh, Okay, this 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 these five files popped up um, Now here is where cinema 4d comes into play you want to go to uh, to your cinema 4d wherever it is you want to open it um, Wait for it to load a bit mm, It's installing everything uh, now this will work a bit slower for me since I'm using OBS to record this in OBS even though it puts out okay quality uh, it's uh, it's quite computer intensive when you're recording so that's why I prefer fraps for gaming um, so now I have all these files and the one you want to use first is testworld.obj nothing else just the obj one you want to drag it into your cinema 4d project and uh, now this scale will be on one centimeter. This is how many times it gets bigger. Um, if you're gonna use any type of rig in your world, you need to put this on at least a thousand. If you're gonna use no rigs, just the pure world, you can put this on one because the, t uh, the texture resolution will be better. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm assuming you're gonna use rigs as most people do. So I'm gonna put it on a thousand centimeters and leave this as it is and click OK. And now this pops up, but you know this looks very poor. You know, colorless, nothing is really going on. Uh, so you might be wondering, what the hell is this? And you can, by the way, make this make this bigger. Well, um, you have to now put textures on this. But before we do that, uh, here's a very simple way to keep all these materials organized. You go from the top one, hold Shift, click the bottom one. You choose all of them, click Alt G on your keyboard. Uh, same for Mac and for PC and then you, you put all this into one big cinema 40 folder and you uh, rename this world So after you've done that all you need to do is apply the textures now How you do that is either apply it to each one which will take a very long time is an uh, and is an unnecessary or you double click the first one preferably uh, drag this a bit higher so you have a full view and then just drag and choose all of them and uh, then now you're changing all the textures not just the one so you first uncheck specular because that's useless and then in color you go right here uh, click this button and then you go where you saved your uh, mine ways files I have them on my desktop and you scroll down and look for your test world now for your te uh, first we're gonna be applying uh, the RGB colors so you can use either RGB or RGBA uh, doesn't matter I'm gonna use RGB and uh, now see as you can see this already has some colors but you know it still looks a bit strange so what you want to do is uh, click on alpha and check that now alpha is everything that is invisible and transparent in your world and it's uh, very important that you turn this on otherwise uh, it won't look good so you go to your desktop you scroll down and you find your test world alpha now this is important alpha it needs to say alpha and you open it and now everything that is supposed to be transparent is transparent if you don't believe me let's zoom in and click render if you're still struggling to follow my cinema 4d T technique you might want to head to my first tutorial that I did on this because it explains in more thoroughly how to use um, cinema 4d with with minecraft uh, there will be a link in the description to that tutorial but you know um, 
ignoring this part and you know that that's cut off because of course if I was editing this I would have picked a way bigger landscape than just this but ignoring that you can see that uh, when you render it the sky is black and the colors you know are all the same so what you first want to do is add a sky to your world because what would the world be without a sky um, this is how you do that is hold this button down and it pops up with sky or physical sky I like to add sky um, you, uh, and then, uh, but now if you render it, you know, you might think, oh, it's gonna look better. No, but it's just gray still. So you want to add the, a color to your sky and you can practically add any color in the world, any texture, but you know, I'm gonna go with the normal daylight sky, which most of us see. Uh, so I'm gonna double, uh, double click on this empty space and a material comes up and you want to double click on that. And then, uh, of course, get rid of specular once more go to your color and then this is the fun part you go oh, no sorry uh, you go to uh, this tab the small little button here you click gradient you click on this picture the gradient one and then you set two colors of the sky so you know I'm gonna go with a you know the the darkest point the darkest sky uh, during day and the lightest sky during the day so that would be probably very close to white but not completely white and because the sky goes like this not like this you turn this to V and uh, then you're ready to just drag this in you can either drag it into this empty space that is the sky or to the physical item sky uh, doesn't matter and now that you render it it of course looks like an actual world you know with a sky but uh, so let's just position this better so it doesn't look so awkward constantly um, let's position this how would we do that let's let's just put it here so it is invisible that most of the world is missing and you know now that looks like a almost like a real minecraft environment only 10 times worse now what you want to do is uh this this camera stat the thing that i'm doing uh is explained in my previous tutorial so i'm not going to explain it again but uh what you want to do is now zoom out a bit and add uh, infinite light. Uh, you do that by holding down this and clicking infinite light. Now this is probably the best light for lighting bigger areas and just make make it look the way you want it to look. Just play around with it so the shadowing is just right for you. But before you're done, click on the light item and then you have uh, these options. Now you can change the color of the light. I'm gonna make it a bit orange just because I'm a ginger and you know well not very visible from this video because my hair looks like I a squirrel tail and a hobo made a hair baby this looks horrible um, and then uh, sh you have shadow type and I like to put it on soft um, you can put it on hard you can put it on area you can even have it on none but I like to put it on soft and uh, then this is pretty much all you need to have uh, regarding the light so now if we go back to our uh, thing and we render it oh this is uh, this is a bit too orange to be honest um, let's just go back and uh, make this a bit less orange uh, how does this look now, now it's starting to look more like a Minecraft world but it looks more like Minecraft PC uh, P, uh, pocket edition than PC edition so now you need to add effects uh, now adding effects will add on to your render time so you need to keep that in mind so worse computer longer render time more effects longer render time um, but if you're just exporting a picture these effects will definitely uh, be worth it if you're animating not sh they're still worth it but it will take very long so now you've added the effects and this is gonna take a bit of time to uh, render for me because I'm using uh, OBS to record this and it's very CPU intensive uh, so I'll be right back when it's done rendering
and we're back the image is pretty much finished with rendering and this is the final project now there are many different things you can still add on um, but you know that that's for a whole different video you know all the different effects but uh, this pretty much concludes my video uh, which is how to add your Minecraft world into Cinema 4D using Mineways. Now I, I like how this looks but of course the textures are a bit blurry. If I were to use 1 to 1 centimeter scale it will look better. Uh, I haven't found a very a better way to make these full resolution. If you have, f feel free to post it in the comments so other people will see it. Um, and remember, my name was Ginger Spice, adding the last bit of flavor to your day.